glory. Come on and give him glory right where you are. Give him glory. Give him honor. For he is worthy to be praised. I want to welcome you to the virtual worship service of the Williams Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church um, on 15th Street in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, where the very fine pastor is the Reverend Dr. Dwayne Crew. And I want you to know if you are looking for a place to worship and a, a home church, you will not be able to find a better place. Amen. And certainly won't find a better pastor. Amen. We're just so glad that you're here. This is the day the Lord has made. I said this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. For those of you who are now feeling a little down, feeling a little low because you don't have a significant other holding on to you today, let me say to you, happy love day. Amen. And at this point, let me please call together uh, to our front uh, uh, the one who will come and, well, let me first of all give the announcements. I'm so excited since God be about you actually doing the review until I actually, I, I, I almost forgot to do the announcements. So let me do the announcements, if you will. Uh, the announcements are as follows. The 15th Annual Thomas L. Clark Jr. Memorial Scholarship Virtual Celebration will take place on today at 3 p.m. Streaming live from Facebook at Thomas L. Clark Jr. Scholarship and YouTube from Thomas Clark YouTube channel. If you would like to make a contribution to the scholarship fund, you may do so by mailing a check or money order Payable to Thomas L. Clark Jr. Memorial Scholarship Fund, 3894 Ruth Street, Augusta, Georgia, 30909. Our moment in black history can be currently viewed on the Williams Memorial CME Church Facebook page. This week's moment in black history is highlighting Senator, Senator, I said Senator, Raphael Warnock, and is narrated by Sister Kalia Crawford. Senior ministry will take place via Zoom on Wednesday, February 17, 2021 at 12 noon. And the special guest will be the newly elected district attorney, Jared Williams. The Zoom log and information was given to each of you with your February calendar. Let me also remind you that COVID vaccinations are available at several places. You may go to one of these places in order to receive a vaccination after you have made an appointment. That is the Health Department, VA Hospital for Veterans, and for a list of faith-based institutions, please click on or go to this link to register. HTTPS backslash backslash www.augustahealth.org backslash vaccine backslash. Then, of course, you are certainly able to go to the Publix Pharmacy, Kroger Pharmacy, and CVS. Williams Memorial Church family sends its condolences to brothers Frank and Jeriah Lewis in the death of their sister, Sister Rebecca Williams. On third Sunday in February, we will celebrate our annual lay day at 10 a.m., and our guest speaker will be Brother Donis Bidley from Rock of Ages CME Church. Each member is kindly urged, humbly urged, gently urged to share $10. Please notice that the Lent season begins with Ash Wednesday on February 17, 2021 at 7 p.m. And that service that will mark uh, the beginning of the Lent season will be at Trinity. Um, they will be the host church. Call church office for log in and or call in information. And then pastor wants to thank each and every one of you for your offerings and your tithes. Um, and he wants us to know that we are able to continue to mail them in or use the Give, a, give a Life file. Uh, these are your weekly announcements. Uh, let me also please lift up those who are on the sick and shut in and those uh, who have called for, the, for prayer. Would you please be in prayer for these persons, Sister Margaret Armstrong, Sister Dorothy Burley, 
Sister Marsha Crawford and family, Sister Ruthie Davis, Sister Dorothy Dean, Sister Judy Drumgold, Sister Janie Franklin, Sister Evelyn Griffin, Sister Lena Ivey, Sister Betty Joseph, Brother Cyrus Lacey, Brother Oscar Lacey Sr., Sister Deborah Little, Sister Lucy Madison, Sister Vinnie Meadows, Brother and Sister Barbara Pullum, Brother Clinton Walker, Sister Whitney Walker and family, Sister Frances Wilson. Would you please keep these in prayer? For we know God still answers prayer. At this time, Sister Darby will come and will lead us um, in our understanding of Bible uh, even more through our Sunday School Review. Thank you, Reverend Johnson, and good morning, church family. Our Sunday School lesson for today was titled, Call to Support. And the background scripture came from Luke 8, chapter 8, and verses 1 through 3. From Mark, chapter 15, verse 40, and John, chapter 20 verses 10 through 18. When I read this scripture again, I thought about a hymn that touched my heart when I thought about the healing of Mary Magdalene and the other women who were supportive of Jesus' uh, ministry. The hymn, Love Lifted Me, came to mind. And I want to share that hymn with you this morning. We have been in the physical church for almost a year. And some of us may have forgotten the words to that hymn. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, and now safe and I. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll plead. To his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love as mighty, love so mighty and so true, Merits my soul's best son, faithful loving service to, to him belong. Souls in danger look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his waves obey. He, your Savior, wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. After Jesus healed them, the women followed him and supported his ministry out of their own means. Now, out of their own means, I'm sure, the, the scripture does not go into details as to how they supported themselves, but obviously they had independent means 
and they could take care of themselves. To support someone means to be there for them through the good days and the bad days. To help them bear their burdens, to care for them when they're ill, to feed them when they're hungry, to give them water when they're thirsty. In other words, to treat them as Jesus does. To have, we need to have each other's backs, to be there for each other. And that's what support means to me. And this is what Mary Magdalene and the other women did for Jesus' ministry. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the other women whom Jesus had healed, were there when Jesus was crucified. They supported him all the way to the cross. The time for following Jesus was not over for the loyal women. They remained with him in those dreadful hours, watching and waiting for an opportunity to minister to Jesus once more. They saw where Jesus' body was laid and resolved to change his body with the traditional spices. Earl! Early resurrection morning, Mary Magdalene returned to the tomb. She found the tomb empty. Wasn't that good news? Wasn't that good news? Jesus was not there. The tomb was empty. She ran to tell Peter and John. After noting the tomb was empty, the disciples went back to where they were staying. How about that? The men left her, but Mary Magdalene did what? She stayed. Now that's what I call total support. She stayed there. Many of us would have been afraid. The Roman soldiers with all of their uh, swords or whatever they had were all about, all around, but Mary Magdalene stayed. Mary looked into the tomb and saw two angels there. They asked, Woman, why are you crying? She replied, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. Now, sometimes we can feel like when I go to the grocery store now and people get too close to me, you can feel it, can't you? Yeah, you can feel it. So Mary felt something, I'm sure, and she turned around and it was Jesus. At first she didn't recognize him, she thought he was a gardener. When she saw Jesus, she did not recognize him. Then Jesus called her name. He said, Mary. He called her name. Now, I want to hear Jesus call my name. I want to hear him say, Shirley. On that great good yet not more. And then she recognized him. Now, Mary, I'm sure, was like most of us when we see somebody we haven't seen in a while. What are we going to do? We want to run up to them and hug them. We want to give them the biggest bear hug ever. But Jesus said to her, don't touch me. I haven't ascended to my father. But go tell the others. Go tell the others. Isn't that good news? Don't we want to run and tell the good news? Jesus has risen. He is alive. And he is there for us every day. He's never going to leave us. 
Paralam from this last week. Jesus loves us enough to go to the cross for us. He loves us enough to heal us from all of our demons. The demons of despair and anguish and hopelessness and addiction. He will heal us if we call on him and ask him. And sometimes all we need to do is say, Lord, help me. We must love Jesus enough, as Mary Magdalene and the other women did, to support his, men, uh, his ministry. We must take care of each other. And finally, we must be thankful. We must be thankful and love Jesus more than we love ourselves. Let us pray. Father, you, we thank you for the hope we have through your son Jesus. A hope that overcomes our fears. May we like Mary and the other women who followed Jesus throughout his ministry crucifixion and resurrection, never lose our desire to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you. Well, come on, saints. Come on and help me praise the Lord.
course, you I can hear our ancestors in that song this morning. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Darby, for such a wonderful review. And thank you again for allowing us to hear our voices in that song. May we pray now. Holy Ghost, we thank you again for another opportunity to be able to approach your throne. Lord, indeed, we need you to help us. Life, oh God, sometimes is like unyielding dough, pulled in all directions, pulling us in all directions. We know that if you help us, we'll be able to make it. Lord, we lift up the needs of those who have called and those who have written and those who have requested prayer. But not only do we lift them up, Lord, we lift up the world. We lift up our America. We're in trouble down here, God. We need you. Can't make it without you. Injustice, inequity, intolerance, inhumaneness just keeps on knocking on our doors. We need you, Lord. Sin is present everywhere. Lord, we ask you to forgive us now for all of our sins and create in us clean hearts. And renew in us right spirit. Lord, we pray for those who have lost now more than 476,000 loved ones to this plague of COVID. Would you allow them to know that you're with them? We pray now, Lord, for those who are in leadership, regardless to where, what position and what title they have. May they, oh God, again hear the call of God through Amos. What does the Lord require of us but to love mercy, to do justice, and to walk humbly with our God? Finally, Lord, we pray for our pastor and Mrs. Crew, that you would continue, oh God, to lead them as they lead us. Bless the Williams Memorial family. And then, God, even beyond the Williams Memorial family, all those who are tuned in, may you move in their lives, heal and touch, bind the hands of the enemy on every side. We thank you for it in advance. I said, we thank you for it, Lord. I said, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to call your attention to a very strange text. Um, I've been preaching for a few years, and I've discovered that when the Holy Ghost leads you to a text, sometimes you don't quite know why you led to that text, but... But, I, but, but I, I've been preaching long enough to know not to kick against the prick. And so I want to call your attention to Psalm 139, verses 1 and 2. Listen for the voice of God. Oh Lord, the psalmist writes, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. From those two verses, from the pericope, I want to lift the, 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 the subject today. The dance continues. The dance continues. Uh, 
some, some, some years ago, Luther Van Drosses, you, you, you do know Luther, don't you? You know Luther. Luther Van Dross's 1977 Rhythm and Blues Love Ballad, Always and Forever, <laughs> hit American cities. And it took its citizens, if not all, most of us, by storm. You, 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 I, I know you couldn't save and sanctify and feel with the Holy Ghost, and so you, you really don't listen to anything other than gospel, but every now and then I, I have to stop long enough to listen to something else so I'd have some preaching material. <laughs> you, 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 you do recall. You recall its lyrics, don't you? Luther says, always and forever, each moment with you is just like a dream to me. It somehow came true. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then he said, and, and I know tomorrow will be the same. Don't, don't fool me now. You, you know what it says. Uh, Cause we got a life of love that won't ever change. Then Luther says, every day, I said every day, Love me your own special way. Melt all my heart away with a smile. Take time to tell me <laughs> you really care. And we'll share tomorrow together. Ooh, baby, Luther says. I didn't say that. <laughs> I'll always love you forever. Ever. Ever and ever. Sisters and brothers, don't pretend that you never lived Luther's experience. I, I believe, but, but I really don't know it as a fact. Each of us have experienced a period in life when emotions run high. Because someone, somewhere, took time and looked in our direction. I, I'd like to ask these questions. But have you ever gone to a party without a partner and had to sit on the sideline? Do, do you know what a wallflower experience is like? Sitting on the sideline? Have you ever encountered social distancing and avoidance from the limelight of being the life of the party because you were not invited to participate in the gathering? I, 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 I know I can't be the only one that's ever been this, on the sideline. That they're there, there at the party, but, but really not there at the party. Dressed up. Ready to get down and get down on it. Excuse me, y'all. But, but, but not really invited to the party. Uh, there at the ball. But, but, but not thought of as being at the ball. They're there at the dance, but overlooked while others are dancing. But then suddenly, you, you, you were recognized by someone. And that someone invited you to dance. And before realizing it, Sister Darby, you too were, I know this is not your experience, but, but you too were in the thick of things. Yeah, you, you, you too were in the center. Uh, yeah, in the center of the room. You, you, you were among the crowd. Thank God the dance continues. Questions bring forth the historicity of Valentine's Day, yeah, brings it to my mind. Historically, historically, sisters and brothers, Valentine's Day, a day, supposedly, a day of celebration of love between two people, not three, but two, it is pagan in its roots. But believers can still find some time and some worthiness or slim value in it. Yeah, I stopped by to tell you that Valentine's Day helps us to understand 
trying to love too is not easy to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Valentine's Day started by the ancient Romans when the Roman Empire was its largest and its strongest was set on February 14, set apart as a day of commemoration and honoring Juno. Juno, believed to be the queen of all Roman gods and goddesses, was, was to be celebrated and honored on this day. Juno, recognized to be the goddess of all Roman women and goddess who put together all Roman marriages was to be, be saluted on February 14. The next day, however, February 15 would begin the Roman feast of Lupercalia. It, it was on the eve of Lupercalia uh, that the Lupercalia feast uh, takes place. And it is in the Lupercalia feast that names of Roman girls would be written on slips of paper. And, 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 and sisters and brothers, these slips of paper would be placed into glass jars. Roman young men would draw a name from one of the jars. And, 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 and the name girl would become his companion throughout the entire festival. Randomly, randomly chosen, both girl and boy were stuck with each other for the festival's duration. And, 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 so, and so the Roman boy had to be very careful in his choice. Feast or famine, the girl and boy were stuck with the other. And so choice or choosing was no happenstance occurrence. The Roman girl would come in contact with either appointment or disappointment. That sounds like some relationships today, doesn't it? Appointment or disappointment, depending upon the hand that chose her. Yeah, some folk right now wish they could push the hand back and pull them to them. <laughs> yeah, the Roman boy experienced elation or he experienced misery based on the hand, his hand, that slips into the job. Therefore, selection was silently done with intentionality. Sometimes these pairings became permanent partners, lasting a year to a lifetime, as love budded, yeah, and always and forever produced a marriage. But then sadly, there were a few slips. I said a few slips. There were a few slips with names written on them that were left behind in the job. <laughs> Yet a few girls were left behind. Uh, those unselected bitch Roman girls were left behind at party time. Have you ever experienced left behindness? I mean left behind in an economic situ system that plays to the wealthy and overlooks poor folk? I mean, left behind in a criminal justice system that locks up and throws keys away on young black men and women while insurrectionist presidents are acquitted by the American Senate? I mean, have you ever experienced left behindness? But, 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 but thank God, I said thank God. Thank God the dance continues. David, David the psalmist, when considering his own conception, his own birth, leaves three lessons for us to mold over. And I've got to cut through the path, and, and so I'm going to move quickly now. Uh, yeah, there are three lessons for us to mold over. The first lesson is, God minds, M-I-N-E-S, minds for the real as he dances with us. God, God, God intimately knows us. Oh, 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 how he loves you and me. 
In verse 1 of the text, the writer uses the word search. A word in the Hebrew that really meant dig for, investigate, worked hard for. The Hebrew word hagal is used in this text. It is a word referring to Jewish miners using picks and axes to break up hard mountainsides as they dug for gold and precious jewels. Yes, search is a mining term indicating one who digs through stone pushing past fool's gold until he reaches the real stuff. And so I stop by to tell somebody, God searches us. He allows life to show up in such ways that he, he pulls and he pushes and he breaks up and he tears down and he builds up until he gets to the real stuff in us. Oh, the dance continues. Maybe this is why David says in another hymn, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wickedness in me and lead me to the way of everlasting. And so proverbially, David indicates, God, I feel like I have come to strange places in life. Feels like I don't have a partner to dance with. But then I must consider you have knowledge of the real me because you con you caused my conception. You you knew me when I was veiled behind curtains in my mother's womb. You 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 dug for me as I pushed past my mother's ribs and entered an evil and unfriendly world. God, you 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 have kept me in your eyesight, and you see how I sit like a wallflower while all of life seems to be joyfully passing by. They, David knew that the true God, Yahweh. El Shaddai, Elohim, the great I am, cared enough to have searched, dug for him. Now, 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 God knows the real him. This is good news for us today. God still cares enough for us, each woman, each man, to search for us and to know us. God, God, God has God's eyes on us. Good news is not just that God knows everything. He, he, he knows us. Jesus who died on a brutal cross knows us. And still he loves us. It's not just that God is everywhere. He the Lord is everywhere with us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, in the grocery store he's with us. Uh, driving alone in the car he's with us. Uh, it's not just that God created everything. He He our great God who is looked upon by thousands upon thousands by ten thousands of thousands of angels created us. The one who bears scars of a briny throne crown loved us enough to make us, to mold us, to image us, and to shape us. Inextricably, we are attracted to Jesus who says to us, Come unto me, all you who are weary, and I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will give you rest. And so the first lesson is God digs into our lives until the real is seen. And then God continues to desire, even after seeing the real, he desires to dance with us. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and known me. Then there's quickly, secondly, the second lesson. There's a lesson that God dances with us in scrutiny. David writes, you know when I sit down and you know when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. This speaks to God's providence, God's ability to determine our needs before we have clear understanding of our needs. Paul the Apostle picked up on this idea when he wrote, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. In essence, David says, life has isolated me, left me behind, and has not requested me to join in. But you, O oh God, know what I'm feeling right now. You know how I how I'll feel in the future. Says David, you, God, even know all of my postures and my gestures and my daily practices. If, if I sit down, if, if I stand, if I walk, if I lie, God more than the best of miners knows all. 
David writes, some search to know me, but at the end of the day, they really don't know me. But the truth is, you, God, search and know me. You do both. You do both and you do both well. You, God, care enough about me and my slip-ups to cause me to stand up. You know me, God. In this verse, the psalmist suggests that God has chosen to do a two-step dance with us. Some of you know what a two-step dance is. You, you pretend like you don't remember. You, you may not be able to dance as quickly, but you still do a two-step every now and then. Yeah, you, yeah, God chooses to do a two-step dance with us. God has come over and invited us to dance with him. God has said, come on, get up from that. Get away from that wall. I've got to do something with you. Come on, we're going to do a two-step line dance. From grace to faith. Yeah, after our acceptance, God does a two-step dance with us. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, from faithfulness to forgiveness is a two-step dance. From disapproval to favor is a two-step dance. From grace to mercy is a two-step dance. From pain to power is a two-step dance. From victim to victor is a two-step dance. Dance. I mean, I'm glad God does a two-step dance and he, he specializes in knowing how to do a two-step dance. God, 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 God can invite us to search a proverbial two-step, yeah, a two-step experience. In time, God moves quickly in our lives. Other times, God moves slowly in our lives. That's what a two-step is. You move quickly twice and then you move slowly twice. Yeah, God does a two-step dance, but, 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 but God still keeps moving us in the right direction. The direction that God has chosen for us is always the right direction. Sometimes God allows life to happen, to tumble in on us, yet he has chosen to rise with overcoming power and victory in his hand. So God minds for the real that he dances with us. Secondly, God dances with us in scrutiny. Finally, verse 2 suggests God needs our next steps. This is the third lesson of the text. Says he, you discern my thoughts from far away. God knows we don't know how to dance. We really don't know how to dance through life. And so God decides to do the leading. I'm glad. I'm glad that God doesn't let me get out on the floor by myself. I'm glad that God decides to do the lead. And, and the leader always pushes the one who's following in the right direction. God leads. He, 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 he knows. He knows how to maintain and, and cause us to retain joy when issues of life push in like a raging flood. So God decides to take the lead. He knows. We, we really don't. God knows how to push the reset button when life's record is stuck. And we keep on hearing the same melody over and over and over again. God knows when God takes us in his arms. That we don't know how to dance, yet he chooses to dance with us. The John writer's record is correct. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God, God knows we are vain, but he dances with us into victory. The songwriter was correct. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. But, 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 rising, he justified me and freed me forever. Oh, what a glorious day. God knows we are apt to stumble, so in scrutiny, Jesus has decided to stabilize us. God knows we are powerless. So Jesus has decided to overpower the pressure. Our, our Jesus, I said our Jesus, I said our Jesus, our blessed and wonderful Savior, has decided to lead us because he knows we don't know how to dance to the music that life sometimes plays. Jesus invites us to dance with him. Yes, always and forever. Jesus has decided to permanently love us. And so Jesus says to us as he dances with us, There'll always be sunshine. When I look at you, you, you remember Van Dross's words, don't you? There'll always be sunshine. When I look at you, it's something I can't explain. 
just, just, just the, the things you do. And if you get lonely, just call me, phone me, and, and we'll, and I'll take a second uh, and give you the magic you need. I don't know about you, but I respond to Jesus' invitation. Oh, I respond by hearing Jesus say, yeah, yes, come unto me. And so I close today by saying I'm so glad that the dance continues. I, 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 I'm so glad that the dance continues. I close by saying there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. It is the sweetest name on earth. upon you 
and be gracious unto you. May the Lord bless you in your going in and your coming out today and forevermore. Amen. Enjoy the day. Thank you.